Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. I recently got back from filming the rest of Expedition Sasquatch 4, uh, so you can expect to see that soon. Uh, but while I was out there, uh, me and my buddy Kanan, who is one of the, I guess, heads of the Alberta Sasquatch organization, um, we were swapping a lot of ideas about Sasquatch and about looking for Sasquatch and different methods uh, to try and, you know, get evidence of this creature. And one of the things that really stood out is the idea that Sasquatch will do the exact opposite as to what people do. So this video is called The Key to Finding Bigfoot Evidence. And I think if we utilize uh, what I talk about here in this video, we'll have a better chance of finding evidence of Bigfoot. Uh, mostly, you know, footprint evidence, but potentially, you know, hair and scat samples as well. Um, so, when we go out into the wilderness, when we go out into the mountains, uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't have to be Bigfooting, um, we'll go out, we'll follow trails, we'll come across game trails, um, we'll come across little streams and creeks, and our brains are kind of hardwired to follow the path of least resistance, right? We'll go along that game trail, we'll go along whatever footpath we find, we'll go, you know, where there's no trees blocking our path or where there's no overgrown brush. And it appears, based on our findings, that Sasquatch do the exact opposite. So, you know, a Sasquatch will go through the really dense brush. It will go through the area that seems impossible to go through. It'll climb up the rocky cliffs that seem impossible to climb. All in an effort to, I guess, avoid us, you know, or to go to places that we can't get to. So a couple months ago, uh, some members of the Alberta Sasquatch organization were out at a location that I've been out to before multiple times. Uh, I wasn't able to make it out on this trip, but they actually found a really good Bigfoot track in a creek uh, the day after having some rocks thrown into the camp near the campfire. So, you know, after this rock throwing incident occurred, uh, they decided the next day in the daylight to kind of scour this creek area to look for tracks, you know, because the ground is wet, it's softer, and any tracks would show. And so they did find a track, and what they also found in this instance is that the creature appeared to move across the creek in an area that no human would ever move across. It moved from an area of really dense brush to another area of really dense brush. It crossed the creek in a spot that was very difficult to cross, or, you know, at least it would be for a human to cross there, which is very interesting. So, based on that, it seems that these creatures will utilize these difficult areas to get around. And that is one of the methods that they probably use to avoid people and to remain undetected. So if you're out in the wilderness, and you're out looking for these creatures, and maybe you have an experience of rock throwing, or you think there's something around your camp, maybe you can hear footsteps at night, you can hear branches breaking, maybe you're hearing vocalizations around your area. Well, instead of exploring the areas that you feel comfortable exploring, maybe go into these really hard to get to places, go through the really dense brush, you know, go through the really rocky areas, try and remain safe, you know, don't hurt yourself or do anything you're actually uncomfortable with. Um, but I bet you, if you are having genuine activity and you go to those places, um, you'll probably find something. So that is, in my opinion, and in the opinion of others at the Alberta Sasquatch Organization, uh, one of the key elements to finding Bigfoot evidence is to scour the areas that your body and your mind doesn't want to scour. It just seems like a lot of the times these footprints are found in areas that we don't really want to go to, or we're scared to go to, or they would be impossible for us to move through. So. That's what I wanted to say in this video. Um, I guess at the end of the day, this is still all theory, um, but just based on what we've found, uh, it seems to be an actual thing. So, I mean, I do know that a lot of times uh, Bigfoot are seen in areas where they shouldn't be seen. They're seen along roadways, maybe they're seen on hiking trails. Um, and I'm sure there's instances where they are forced, you know, to cross these areas, to cross these roads, these trails, and they have no other choice. I'm not saying they only stick to these really difficult areas 100% of the time. I'm saying that majority of the time when there's people in the area, that's probably what they will do. 
is they'll stick to the areas that is really hard for people to get to and you know that only makes sense when you really think about it a creature that's you know main goal is to avoid human contact and to avoid detection and to you know stay away from humans that's what it would do it would be in the places that humans wouldn't go to and obviously there are instances where you know these creatures will come up to a camp and they are seen and um, you know people can habituate them and lure them in and um, you know sometimes these rules might not apply you know if if the stories of like gifting are true you know people can kind of develop a relationship with them and the creatures come in at night and you know they kind of let their guard down um, that seems to be a thing that happens every now and then as well uh, but for the most part you know in the mountains where these creatures are hiding out they're not going to be where it's easier for us to get to them but yeah expedition sasquatch 4 is going to be coming out soon we had a really good time filming the rest of that out in the nordic area um, we spent quite a bit of time up in the mountains uh, quite a ways off the highway uh, the main camp area our main camp area was about 17 clicks into the mountains so we got lots of good footage and that's one thing you guys can look out for in the coming weeks that's all i have for today's video guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time on mountain beast mysteries so again it feels like when i heard it it was down and then further in that direction so you have a first one which is like a clunk clunk or like a clunk clunk with a snap of like a like a twig break like a floor level and then holy shit. so i turned the audio off on my phone and then i just moved my face right up to the screen of the bivy shelter and then less than a minute later there is a similar but just as distinct but quieter one as if it was a little bit further to the left these all still feel like they're within the range of like falling from the trees i think but it was the first one followed by the second one and i guess that's what we're here for right <laughs> that is correct